Hi, my name is Ian, and this is the Early Christian Beliefs channel. Tonight, we're going to talk about the idea that one can believe that the first 11 chapters of the book of Genesis, or really the whole book of Genesis, was intended by God to be understood allegorically and not literally. So therefore, somebody who holds to this literally figurative view of Genesis could say, even though they believe that the whole thing is figurative, that they believe it literally. And we're going to talk about the idea of literally, figuratively believing passages of Scripture in general real quickly, and then we're going to take a brief look at what the early church and some of our recent popes tells us about that position uh, being applied to Genesis. So let's look at a couple examples of a literal figurative belief in Scripture so that we can make sure we're on the same page here of what we're talking about. The first example I have is from the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verse 54, where it says, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you shall not have life in you. Now, lots of people believe that the Bible literally intends for this verse to be understood figuratively, that we are not supposed to eat the flesh and drink the blood of Jesus Christ, but it's only figurative. So they would say, hey, I literally believe John 5, 4, where Jesus says, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you shall not have life in you. So do they literally believe this verse? I'm going to say a true believer would have to say no. The church has always understood this to be a literal saying, referring to transubstantiation that takes place in communion. All the fathers were unanimous, but in their mind, they can sincerely and honestly say, well, I do literally believe that. So I think it's fair to say that literally believing something to be figurative is up to the individual person, but divinely revealed truth does set a standard that we as Catholics choose to go by. Here's a different example. At my home church, incense is only offered at some services. Most services are low masses or prayer services where incense is not used. But I personally assert that incense is literally offered at every single service. And here's my proof. Psalm 140, verse 2, where it says, My prayer is directed as incense in thy sight, the lifting up of my hands as an evening sacrifice. And again in Apocalypse 8, 3, And another angel came and stood before the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given to him much incense, that he should offer the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which is before the throne of God. So I personally believe that we literally offer incense at every single church service. And in my opinion, the figurative reality of our daily offering of incense by our prayers is a more true and a more enduring reality than the actual incense we sometimes offer which is a beautiful and very good smelling reminder of the higher reality which that incense is a part of. But if I were to be questioned by an outsider who did not wasn't familiar with the practices at my church, and I told him that we truly burn incense at every single service, and then they investigated that claim by attending services, they might legitimately come to the conclusion that I was misleading them, no matter how much 
I believe it. So there are limits to the literally figurative view of things, and I think one should make an effort to assess how they're being understood. If one views a certain doctrine as being literally supposed to be understood as figurative, but your listener does not, there can be a disconnect, and it can be misleading. But the bigger question that I want to get to here is, is it appropriate for a Catholic to believe in the idea that Genesis was intended by God to literally be understood in a figurative sense? And I most certainly do not believe that it is appropriate for a Catholic to believe that Genesis is only to be understood literally, that it's only a theological framework. And please allow me to share with you some reasons why. The first reason is from the 1905 Biblical Commission held under Pope Pius X. It's a question with an answer from His Holiness, Pope St. Pius X. It reads, whether the opinion can be admitted as a principle of sound exegesis, which holds that the books of sacred scripture which are held to be historical, either in whole or in part, sometimes do not narrate history properly so called and truly objective, but present an appearance of history only to signify something different from the properly literal and historical significance of the words. And the answer with the approbation of His Holiness, Pope St. Pius X, is in the negative. So he takes the question here head on. Can we view Genesis as intended by God to be figurative, to be an allegory, or some, to signify something different from the properly liter literal and historical significance of the words, and His Holiness says, no, we cannot do that. So it would seem to me right here that this can end the entire conversation. But I think we should look at some of the writings of the early church fathers to get a sense for how the church has always viewed this issue. I have shown in my video Genesis and the Church Fathers, that the earliest fathers and doctors all understood that a fairly accurate chronology of the universe, creation, and everything could be constructed from the Bible. The common belief was that the date of creation was somewhere around 5,500 BC, and absolutely no early Christian contradicts the position that you can construct an actual chronology from the Holy Scriptures. Uh, if that sounds like a foreign idea to you, I have uh, a link to that video down in the show notes. I quote over 29 different fathers. Now here's an example from St. Augustine, bishop and doctor of the church. He writes, they are deceived too by those highly mendacious documents which profess to give the history of many thousands of years. Though reckoning by the sacred writings, we find that not yet 6,000 years have yet passed. St. Augustine is here discussing non-Christians and their belief in long periods of time, and he says that we find that not 6,000 years have yet passed, reckoning by the sacred writings, which is the Bible. He goes on to say, they would fain oppose the authority of our well-known and divine books. Again, the Bible is divine and infallible. He goes on to finish by saying, which proved, too, that it had truly narrated past events. So St. Augustine, arguing against non-believers, lays out that our holy books show us the duration of the universe. 
Another one uh, here is Saint Ephraim the Syrian, who is a deacon and a doctor in the church. And some of his wording reflects to me the Holy Office letter that we just read. He lays out the following. No one should think that the six days of creation is an allegory. It is likewise impermissible to say that what seems, according to the account, to have been created in six days was created in a single instant. And likewise, that certain names presented in this account either signify nothing or signify something else. So that kind of gives you an idea of their convictions on this issue. And again, I, I invite you to check out my longer video. I go into depth on many quotes. I believe that His Holiness Pope St. Pius X gives us some further direction on what we may and may not take into our own hands as far as interpreting Genesis goes. This is from his Holy Office letter from 1909. It reads, whether presupposing the literal and historical sense, the allegorical and prophetical interpretation of some passages of the same chapters, meaning Genesis, with the example of the Holy Fathers and the Church herself showing the way can be wisely and profitably applied? And the answer is in the affirmative. So this affirmative answer from His Holiness Pope St. Pius X is affirming that we must presuppose the literal and historical sense. Then we can del delve into allegorical and prophetical interpretations as long as we follow the example of the Holy Fathers and Holy Mother Church. I offer one last example. This is from the Vatican Council under His Holiness, Pope Pius IX. And he exhorts us not to move the landmarks so carefully handed down to us. This constitution reads in part, quote, that must be considered as the true sense of sacred scripture, which Holy Mother Church has held and holds, whose office it is to judge concerning the true understanding and interpretation of the sacred scriptures. And for that reason, no one is permitted to interpret sacred scripture itself contrary to this sense or even contrary to the unanimous agreement of the fathers. As I have said, the fathers are completely unanimous in saying that Genesis is an infallible source for literal history. To my knowledge, no saint has ever contradicted this particular position of the fathers on Genesis. So it would seem to this layman that we should heed the limits laid out for us by our recent popes and fear to go beyond the understanding of the fathers regarding Genesis. I see no reason to consider the viewing of Genesis as literally intended to be figurative as a traditional Catholic belief. But that's just my opinion. Thank you for listening to me, and please feel free to tell me what you think in the comments. May God bless and keep you, and may the saints that we have quoted here today Pray for us to have final perseverance. Thank you.